Make sure your mics are on, guys. Need a red? Red means go. Good evening and welcome to the October. <laughs> Inside the volumes right. there. Testing. One, two, testing. Tracy, how are we? Much better. Okay. The earphone jack was not plugged. Taking it from the top. Good evening and welcome to the October 16th, 2018 business meeting of the Council of the Borough of Ringwood. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed on Channel 77 throughout the week. Adequate notice of this business meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Law PL 1975, Chapter 231, setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of this business meeting by Consent Agenda Resolution Number 2018-14, adopted January 1, 2018, through a legal notice published in the Suburban Trends Issue of January 7, 2018, and through notices emailed to the following named newspapers and posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall on January 3, 2018, the Suburban Trends and the Bergen Record. Uh, please silence all your electronic devices during the meeting. Uh, Nicole, can we have a roll call, please? Council Members Bolton? Here. Davison? Here. Beretti? Here. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Here. Council Members Noonan? Here. O'Keefe? Here. Mayor Spear? Here. Also present, Borough Manager, Director of Department of Public Works, Scott Heck, Acting Municipal Clerk, Nicole Langenmeyer, and Borough Attorney Richard J. Klimak. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on our agenda, as always, are proclamations and presentations. Uh, and this being the month of October, that must mean Mr. Jason Oaken and the Hunger Walk folks uh, want to come and uh, describe to you the Hunger Walk that will be held in early November. Turn the mic towards you. Uh, I, Thank you. Good evening. Five minutes only, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but but we have we have visuals. Uh, good evening. I'm Jason Oaken. I'm the uh, coordinator for the Ringwood Hunger Walk. This is Ray McCarthy. He's the treasurer for the Ringwood Hunger Walk for the past twenty odd years. And <laughs> uh, the Ringwood Hunger Walk is uh, actually a 501c nonprofit. Its mission is to raise money for the local branch of the Center for Food Action. And uh, that's what this Hunger Walk is about. It's, it's our, it is the fundraiser that we have. Um, what we'd like people to do is 
get an envelope, a Walker envelope, a donor envelope. Uh, we don't do it by mile. We just ask you to uh, uh, get an envelope and uh, ask for donations, uh, preferably checks made out to Ringwood Hunger Walk. We also take cash. We take change, uh, everything else, and uh, raise money over the course of the next couple of weeks and bring it on November 4th to the Lakeland High School track. That's where we are this year. Uh, the walk is a symbolic walk, and previous years we, we had people walk up a rocky, road, a rocky trail in uh, Shepherd Lake, but uh, we're at the uh, high school um, track this year, so it's a smooth walk if you want to walk. You don't have to walk. The most important part of the walk is when you go around uh, amongst your friends or amongst your coworkers and ask them for donations, and the rest of the walk is from your car in the parking lot on November 4th to the table where uh, Ray and others are going to be counting. That's the most important part of the walk. Bring the money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, why the emphasis on, uh, on money? Uh, we get a lot more using uh, money. We are part of the community food bank. Uh, most, actually, most uh, food pantries are uh, here in North Jersey. And for every one dollar that uh, we bring, we get nine dollars worth of surplus food, donated food. And uh, I mean, uh, we, we, we collect uh, food, uh, packaged foods throughout the year. Uh, but um, uh, November 4th, we like people to bring checks so that uh, for the rest of the year, um, we can provide more food for our clients at the Center for Food Action. Um, anything? No. Okay. Uh, any questions? For, any questions, folks? Okay. Thank you. Has the uh, sent for action? We always have customers. Uh, that's been precision. We're, we're doing well. Uh, however, periodic. I know this is. We're always missing some things. Uh, certain items are, are missing, uh, but. We're, we're functioning and, and taking care of uh, the clients. And uh, money, brought in extra money, um, uh, specifically for our local food pantry, is very, very helpful. Um, How should I write out the check? Greenwood Hunger Walk. And that, that is it. Any other questions? Yeah, quick question. My understanding is when you get cash, you can actually purchase more with the money that you get than yes. we can as individuals by shopping for right. food yeah. ourselves. Yeah. So giving cash gives double the food than we would. Okay. Nine times. <laughs> no, by nine fold. <laughs> nine wow, times. that's quite a. <laughs> so cash is the way to go. Well, so Scott, the you were asked. What's that? Will there be entertainment? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Good question. Oh, yes. Oh, Spare Parts Band uh, uh, is providing entertainment uh, there at the, uh, at the high school track on November 4th. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, Tracy and her husband and her friends are, are going to be there. Uh, that's uh, her other persona. I assume she never speaks up otherwise, so I knew she had to. <laughs> Okay, if you would like, you. run around town, run around, go get those people who contribute to their daughters, Girl Scouts, and their sons, <laughs> soccer, and you know, go get them back. Well, this is our community's food bank. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, I've already got mine started. We're doing it with a local right. banker right. this year. Okay. okay, very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Job as always. Oh. Uh, and every year, there's always a number of council members who uh, who go to attend the Hunger Walk. Uh, one of us will read this proclamation, but I'll just uh, go through it now. Whereas representatives of the Houses of Worship in Ringwood have coordinated the Ringwood Hunger Walk for 20 consecutive years, and whereas the Ringwood Hunger Walk is supported by many individuals and organizations, including the Ringwood Chamber of Commerce, the Knights of Columbus, Lakeland Regional High School LEAP, and Lakeland Regional High School National Honor Society, and whereas the aim of the Ringwood Hunger Walk is to raise awareness of hunger here in Upper Passaic County 
and raise funds to help these families with proceeds donated to the Ringwood branch of the Center for Food Action. And whereas the Ringwood Hunger Walk will take place on Sunday, November 4, 2018 at 1 p.m. at Lakeland Regional High School, Wanakew, New Jersey. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Municipal Council of the Borough of Ringwood hereby proclaims Sunday, November 4th, 2018 as Ringwood Hunger Walk 2018 Day in the Borough of Ringwood in recognition and support of the hundreds of walkers who want to end hunger one step at a time and help achieve the goals and needs of the Center for Food Action. So, Mr. Oaken, thank you very much for you and your committee for all you do for the town. Uh, next order of business is the approval of minutes. Nicole, do we have minutes for approval this, uh, this month? Yes, September 18th, 2018. All were present. Uh, all were present at the meeting of September 18th. So moved. Mr. Noonan. Second. Mr. Bolton. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Thank you all. Next on the agenda is general public comment. Uh, anyone wish to address the Mayor and Council, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Uh, try to keep your comments brief and uh, non repetitive. Uh, good evening. Paula Tedesco, 95 Upper Lakeview Avenue. Um, I have concerns about the traffic in town. A um, couple of weeks ago, I was trying to get out of the CVS parking lot. I could not make a left hand turn. I had to make a right, turn around, come back. The traffic was horrendous. And yesterday, I believe, there were three accidents on Skyline Drive. And um, I just am very, very concerned about it. Is there, has, has it been looked at in terms of, could we have a light by the shopping centers or something? Because I've witnessed a couple of accidents myself, and I haven't been in town that long, a few years. But it's, it's not a good situation. And then we're talking about, you know, bringing more, you know, tourism, business, whatever, attracting people to Ringwood, we can't handle it. Are there any um, uh, traffic studies or anything being done or proposed? Um, do you yeah, there's been, there's been some traffic studies done uh, by the county. We've also contacted the county uh, several times over the last several months about the Skyline Drive corridor, about the traffic on Skyline Drive. Uh, so we're looking at alternatives. Um, it being a county road, it's, it's something that's really their responsibility. But uh, um, I guess as, as as the council develops their plan for what they're going to do in the future, obviously traffic is something they'll take into consideration. Yeah. So the county is responsible for safety? It's a county road. So mm -hmm. everything that happens on the county road is their responsibility. We've had three accidents yesterday on Skyline Drive. And ironically, we've had several over the last uh, couple of months. So the chief and our borough engineer has contacted the county about right. the Skyline right. Drive. Um, and today, you know, we had three yesterday. Uh, all I know, spot. that's ridiculous. And so uh, a couple of years ago, they did some high friction surface up there. They, they've done some milling up there. Um, I noticed that Chuck Silverstein got back to us today yet when we sent him yesterday's uh, police reports. And um, so our engineer and our police department are following up. Great, great. That's good to hear. Thank you. Robin Kennedy, 310 Lakeview Avenue. There are political signs um, at the entrance where you turn in to go to Skylands Manor on Slotsburg Road, which is interesting because in the last federal um, national election, there were Republican signs on public roadways which stayed up until Gottheimer signs got put up, and then they all came down because apparently there's a rule that they're not allowed to be up. So I'm um, thinking if you're going to enforce that rule, you should enforce it regardless of the party. And that those signs have been up for quite a while because I've driven by there quite a few times. I could just put a Menendez sign out there, and then I guarantee it'll be gone in about 10 minutes, and then the other one will go too. But maybe you can do it. Thank you. She no one will get close. I'll second that. Motion to close. <clears throat> second is O'Keefe. Roll call on closing public. <clears throat> Council Members Bolton. 
Yes. Noonan, uh, Councilman Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Uh, there being no old business, we move straight on into new business, introduction of ordinances. Councilor? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, could I have a motion to read 2018-14 by title, please? So moved. Second. A roll call, please, for reading, uh, reading by title. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay. Uh, an ordinance amending Chapter 7, Traffic, Section 720, Stop Intersections of Revised Ordinances of the Borough of Ringwood to create a stop intersection. I'll read a resolution and you could, uh, you could uh, vote on it. Uh, any discussion among yourselves? Result that ordinance number 2018 14 be introduced and further that the municipal clerk being is hereby authorized and directed to publish a copy of the said ordinance in the official newspaper of the municipality. Uh, the second reading and public hearing will be held on uh, November 28th, 20, uh, 2018 at 7 30 p.m. at the municipal building. There could be a motion to second any discussion. Uh, we have a motion to introduce ordinance 2018-14. So uh -huh. moved. Uh, Mr. Newton. I'm sorry, who was second? I second. Uh, Mr. Martucci. Okay, any discussion? Mr. Heck, can you uh, take us through what is exactly going on here? Yeah, attached is a letter from the engineer, but essentially we received some requests for, um, uh, for changing the, the stop signs at the Erskine Road, the Maple Road uh, uh, intersection. Um, they. Currently, it's in the ordinance for a four-way stop. It's not been a four-way stop since I've been here, but that's what it was on the ordinance books. Um, so they were going to put a stop sign as you come out of the Little Beach for the, all your local folks. Uh, you'll be stopping there at the top of the hill, and you'll be stopping at Maple across the street, and the Erskine Road, uh, Lakeview Avenue, will be the through street. Um, so that's what this ordinance actually does, so that we can put stop bars up instead of the yield signs that are there. Um, and that's, uh, that's essentially what you do. Anytime you have to do change the structure, you have to look at the ordinance and see what it says and, and revise the ordinance accordingly. Uh, I thought we had to get permission from the state. Uh, not, for a not for a local road for this. It, it goes through the police department and this comports with the state regulations. So if you're changing, if you're changing from a yield to a stop, um, you don't have to do that. There's, there's, there's a guideline that, that Jeff and the engineers follow. So whatever. Down the skyline by Canterbury, in, in Skyline Lakes Drive, we've been asking for a long time. Yeah, the chief and the engineer don't recommend that one because it's a straightaway street, and to have a stop in the middle of a straightaway street doesn't meet the specs. But we could certainly revisit it again. So, <clears throat> I feel bad following that, but I wanted to thank Jeff for moving so quickly on it um, and addressing the feedback both there and and in Cupsaw. Um, and, and those intersections. It's greatly appreciated. Any further discussion? Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Ready? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. <laughs> Thank you all. Next on the agenda is resolutions. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2018-192, where is the, the Chief Financial Officer has certified the funds are available for the payment of the current bill list in the amount of $283,545.76, supplemental payments in the amount of $2,780,514.22, emergent services fees in the amount of $126.92 to be credited to the following accounts for a total of $3,064,186.90, of which uh, $882,474 is going to Lakeland Regional High School, uh, $1,605,943 is going to the Ringwood Board of Education. Do we have a motion on the bill list? I'll move it. I'll second. Any discussion? Yeah. Why do you break out merchant service fees? Because why is, why isn't part of just the because the merchant service fees are, are a fee to a, to a bank, so we break that out separately. I don't know why it's, it goes into a different account, so that's why it's broken out separately. Right. So that's credit card fees and whatnot. 
that that's what that's for. It's always the trivial number, though, right? Yes. It's always you're always carrying around fifty six dollars. So yeah, we're, we're we're required to do that. So. Very good. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call on resolution two thousand eighteen dash one ninety two. Council members Bolton. Yes. Davison. Yes. Peretti. Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci. Yes. Council members Noonan. Yes. O'Keefe. Yes. Mayor Spear. Yes. Resolution 2018-193, whereas the Morris County Co-op Denver Line Painting Inc. was used for the Skyline Lakes Drive, Greenwood Lake Turnpike Intersection Striping Contract Number 2018-8, and whereas the Borough Engineer has submitted and recommended the payment in the amount of uh, $2,901.50 for the work completed. Now, therefore, be resolved, Municipal Council of the Borough of Greenwood hereby approves the payment in the amount of $2,901.52 to Denville Line Painting of uh, Rockaway, New Jersey. Get a motion from um, Mr. Martucci. Second. Second, Mr. Keith. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council member Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Because the intersection was bad, we striped our section of the road and we also uh, striped uh, the Greenwood Lake uh, Turnpike section and we asked the county to reimburse us for that. We haven't heard back. For that, but we felt like that intersection needed to be striped in its entirety, not just our section. So we did the whole contract 2018 194, whereas a contract was awarded to Roads Safety Systems LLC using the Morris County Co op for the 2018 guide rail program 2018 6, whereas the borough engineer Jeff U.S. has submitted and recommends the payment in the amount of $24,059 and no cents for the following invoices. Um, for different areas throughout the town. Now, therefore, we resolve that the Municipal Council of the Borough of Hibray approves the payment in the amount of $24,059 and no cents for the two road systems of uh, uh, Shamong, New Jersey, subject to the receipt of the certified payroll records and the monthly and their certified monthly manning report. Take a motion, please. I'll move. Thank you, Mr. Martucci. Second. Second, Mr. Noonan. Any discussion? Do we. Uh are any of these amounts recovered through insurance from accidents? Some, some of them, yes. Some of them, anytime there's an accident, there's a police report, we bill the insurance companies for it. And then we schedule time for them to come out. Uh, we, the, the, the county roads also, we, uh, all the county roads that have guardrails that are damaged, we send the police report to them and they go after the insurance carriers. Uh, so we get reimbursed for some of this? That so some of this is reimbursable, yes. Gotcha. It has already been reimbursed. We've already collected. Oh, excellent. What percentage would you say that is of what we're spending on the guardrails? I would, I don't know the percentage off my head, but I would say it's probably 80, 90 percent. That's good. There's very, because usually when you hit a guardrail, the car is usually still there, so the police right. show up. <laughs> so we have, we have evidence of their insurance policy at that point. Okay. We do the same thing if they hit a stop sign, if they hit, if, if there's a car and there's a police report for any borough damages, we catch kids uh, putting ruts in our grass and the police catch them, we, them for the restoration so mm -hmm. any type of work that happens uh, we, we do that thank you we have a motion and a second any further discussion roll call please council members bolton yes davison yes peretti yes deputy mayor martucci yes council members noonan yes o'keefe yes mayor spear yes <clears throat> thank you all next on the agenda are consent agenda resolutions uh, resolution 2018-195, whereas the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Ringwood has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following resolutions on the consent agenda are hereby approved. 2018-195, approval of consent agenda. 2018-196, approval of payroll and payroll transfers, month of September. 2018-197, appointment to Sustainable Jersey Green Team Advisory Committee. 2018-198, refund escrow money upon advice of the Board of Adjustment, Block 800.01, Lot 2. We have a motion on the consent agenda. <coughs> so moved. Second. Mr. Bolton. Any discussion? Anybody wish to remove any item? I just want to make a comment on Diana Roth joining the Green Team. I'm real excited about Diana joining us. Um, she's been a leader in the community for arts. She was instrumental in doing a lot of the productions that used to occur at St. Catharines on a yearly basis. 
right now she's working with Azarian to find good space in that shopping center that's currently vacant to see if she can put on holiday production, if she can get it by that. Murphy's Law did go into effect. As soon as she found the perfect spot, they found a tenant. So she hasn't given up. She's still working to do that. And I think she'll be great. I'm hoping that she can get her fabulous friend, Fabiola, to also join because um, having a creative team on the green team is a way for the municipality to really um, grow positive outcomes <coughs> from the community and have well thought out investments in art and culture. I think we have a lot of artists. We have a lot of great music up here. I think we should do everything we can to support them. And I think this is a great first step with Diana joining the team as she's always been a leader in the arts and in this community. If she could keep looking at vacant space in Azarian and bringing in other people, that'd be great. You know what space I was wondering about? And I don't, this might be far-fetched, but it did occur to me. We have the convent vacant right now and it's been sitting vacant for a long time. I don't know if the owners up there I mean, that summer house is a beautiful spot. If they were willing to work with the community like Azarian was to allow possibly artists to use that space to create art until they're ready to utilize it again, maybe that's something that we as a council can look into. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Council Member Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Thank you all. Uh, next on the agenda is the manager's report. I will draw your attention to the record time that we have gotten through this, this agenda thus far and hand the meeting over to Mr. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as I committed to all of you, I'm going to have a very brief uh, report this evening because we've had a lot of meetings lately and we've updated you on a lot of things. So, um, resolution 2018. I have a few resolutions uh, this evening that the uh, we would like to uh, consider um, and one ordinance that I would need an executive session for uh, prior to Mr. Klimak. Okay. Um, so first, uh, resolution 2018-199. Uh, um, this is these are some housekeeping things we have to do for the for the finance department. Be resolved, the municipal council of the borough of Ringwood here approves the submission of the state of New Jersey Department of Community Affairs Division of Local Government Services Best Practices Inventory for 2018 as prepared by the Chief Financial Officer uh, and subject to review. Um, that's something that has to happen prior to our next meeting, so we'd like to uh, have a, root, uh, a resolution to submit it. Uh, it's something we do every year. All right. You'll have copies of that at the, the, yep. at the next meeting. Yep. I'll move it. Thank you, Mr. Martucci. Second. Mr. Newton. Any discussion? Roll we'll call, please. Uh, resolution 2018-199. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. 2018-200 is, a, is an, an amendment to some language in the uh, resolution for 2018-169. We want to make it read, uh, 2018-169 be amended as follows. The salary of Nicole Langemeyer be increased by $5,000 upon obtaining the status of registered municipal clerk and subsequent increases will be determined by the mayor and council, the municipal council and the appointment of Nicole Langemeyer as acting clerk is hereby reaffirmed and ratified retroactive to August 30th, 2018. Some of the language wasn't clear enough in the top resolution, so Mr. Klimak suggested that we just do another one uh, down below with clearer language. So. I think that all matches our understanding from August. Uh, anybody to make a motion? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Martucci. Second. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Members Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. 2018 201, I'd like to talk about an executive session. Um, as well as an introduction of ordinance in executive session. And this is for the UPSEU blue collar um, bargaining unit. After that, I would probably offer a resolution if the council is so inclined uh, after executive session. I got a quick question. Yes. Um, how is the eviction sound coming? 
I'm sorry? How is the addiction center? Um, last I heard, they had just uh, they, they, they filed some bonding. They did some corporate restructuring. They, uh, um, so that I, I think they're going to be starting shortly based upon the reports that we got back from, uh, from, from their company. So hopefully we'd like to see something happen up there instead of looking at steel. And they did. They did submit a new uh, letter of credit. Uh, we reviewed it and accepted it uh, to guarantee their performance. To guarantee their performance, what is that? To guarantee the public aspects of their job. For instance, they have to put in a uh, public uh, portion, not, not the building, but to guarantee that if they put in roadways, curbs, sewers, water lines, and that they're done correctly. Uh, it's part of the planning board. If, if they're not done correctly, this is a guarantee that we get the money to make them do right. it correctly or to do it ourselves. Yeah, they bought that property for about six point six million, and they took out a loan of one hundred twenty-five million on that property. And I haven't seen that money that they've taken out being invested in there, other than that steel structure. So I'm wondering when they reorg, if you know if that money went to other projects, or if they've been able to give you an update on that. Well, they did do a lot of uh, subsurface work. They took a lot of buildings down. They did a lot of steel work. They did a lot of design. They probably bought the prefab units that are going in there. So, so you think they, a lot of it has already been invested they, in that? They put, a, they put a treatment, some type of groundwater treatment in there. Um, so they've, okay. they've done some work. Okay, that's um, good so to know. I don't know exactly what, what they've done, but that's a normal, getting the, uh, the, the bond is normal through the planning board process to ensure right. that any public improvements are, are, are covered are if there's a problem. Okay, good. Okay, so do we need a resolution to go into executive yes. session? Uh, are you done, Scott? Was, uh, That's all I have for okay. this evening. Right. I promised I would keep it okay. short. All right. Okay. Resolve that the municipal council <coughs> enter into executive session to discuss the collective bargaining to, this, uh, to discuss collective bargaining matters with Teamsters Local 97 on their contract for 2017 to 2019. Be further resolved that minutes of the meeting be maintained and be available for public for public inspection upon conclusion of the matter. The public is advised that when the municipal council returns from executive session, it may take formal action on any matter discussed therein, or it may take formal action on any other matter. Mr. Klimek, I just want to correct the resolution. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Teamsters Local 97 is no longer the union representing. Okay. We're, they're now the UPSEU blue collar. It's a little That's confusing because we have two UPSEUs here now. So. Oh, okay. So, so, we'll, so we'll delete local Teamsters Local right. 97 and put U, 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 U. U. Okay. for the record. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I guess uh, to go into executive session would be resolution 2018-202. Nicole, sounds right. Um, that would be the next number. Yes. Yes. Okay. And do we have a motion for? So moved. Mr. Noonan. Second. Mr. Freddy. Uh, roll call on Count. the executive session. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. Council member O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Heck. Uh, attorney's report, Mr. Queen. Uh, no report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, general public comment, too. Um, the second general public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, anybody uh, wishing to address the mayor council, please come to the microphone and uh, state your name and address for the record. Seeing <laughs> nobody, I move to close. <laughs> second. Mr. Bolton moved to close. Mr. Noonan, second. Roll call on closing. Second public. Council members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council members Noonan? Yes. Mm -hmm. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. No. Uh, next is um, mayor and members of the council. Um, Mr. Bolton, would you start us off? Absolutely. Take us out of here. I'm almost like, <laughs> I'm almost disoriented. It's so early. Um, so a uh, few things. Um, briefly, in addition to uh, what Scott had said regarding the uh, traffic pattern coming out of the shopping center. We got a uh, grant from the Highlands Council to do a uh, transit or a traffic study in Highlands communities towards economic development. And one of the things in our meeting uh, with them that we had kicked around was the, the possibility of a uh, traffic circle. 
in that area. So uh, around whether it's a about, light not a circle. around. Okay, I forget which one's good and which one's bad. Yeah, the but circles good version. are the ones that are in South Jersey that a lot of people get anxiety over. Where a roundabout is something similar to what you see at the Franklin Lakes down by the Market Basket, which is, you know, a lot tamer, not as complicated, not as anxiety ridden, I would say, but something that could allow you to make that turn and also slow traffic as it goes through town to possibly go into the shopping centers instead of feeling like you're rushing through town, that okay. you've arrived at town. Oh. And of course, very preliminary, but just so you know that conversations happen and you know it's, it's obviously an, an area of focus. Um, Can I just ask, uh, mm -hmm. since it's a county road, are we going to have to work with the county as well? Oh, yes. absolutely. And, and at least in the preliminary conversation we had with, um, uh, with the representatives from, from the county, the output from the grant was really just going to be a study and some recommendations. It wasn't actually any, any improvement of money or, or investment. So it's just sort of one step in that direction. That was, that was one of the of many uh, things that we had spoken about. You know, including trails, different things that that uh, that funding could help us move uh, further down the path, as it were. Um, I had gotten some feedback from, uh, I would say, my fellow bus riders, but they're actually earlier bus riders than myself. Uh, and New Jersey Transit had recently changed their schedule uh, in the morning and. Ringwood is lucky in that we have express bus service to and from the city during rush hours. So we're the last stop on the way out and the first stop on the way home, which is great, with the exception of when the bus comes and you can't get on because it's full. And there is now roughly about a 30 minute wait time between buses in the morning. So if you miss the 608 because it's full of people from West Milford, the next one isn't until 624. And the temperature is dropping and so people have been complaining to New Jersey Transit and asking us if there's anything that we could do uh, and I thought that uh, it would be helpful for our residents if we could at least pass a resolution advocating that they revisit the schedule changes and perhaps the capacity of the buses that service the area given the fact that um, during inclement weather, there is no place for these people to wait. You know, they just queue up in the in the parking lot. Do you want me to call New Jersey Transit and see if we can we can explain to them about the bears? We can explain to them about a lot of different things in the dark area. That would be or, great. That would be great. I, I didn't know that they changed the bus schedule. Yeah, they they apparently um, changed it. <laughs> but before I'm up, but I can I can only uh, imagine how cranky I would be if I was up and ready to go at 6 o'clock and couldn't go until 30 minutes later. I had to wait in the rain. Um, so if we could also pass a resolution somewhere, uh, something along the lines of the fact to, uh, you know, whereas the New Jersey Transit bus lines are the only mass transit in our community, and whereas the last stop on the morning 196 Express is in Ringwood, and whereas recent changes to the schedule have reduced service, which increases the time to wait between buses, as well as the likelihood that Ringwood residents are not able to board their intended bus due to capacity, and whereas there are no indoor shelters during inclement weather during these nearly 30-minute waits, we respectfully request the New Jersey Transit to revisit the capacity and frequency of rush hour service to our community. That's a motion, right? That's a yeah, motion. motion. Uh, yeah. I'll second. Well, what's the uh, the bus that comes before oh, us the six o'clock? There's a five fifty four before the six oh eight, and there's one or two before the five fifty four. Um, actually, I can. I have it on my phone, and the, at least the first bus. Uh, I know anecdotally is a, a token bus only in that it's the first bus in the, in the morning and it is routinely so full that sometimes it doesn't even pull into the stop. And again, not that, not that I'm heading in at that hour, but there was one time when I needed to and somebody told me to not even count that as a, as a real bus. Uh, so there is a fourth, oh, no, it's the wrong. 
there is a 524, a 554, then a 609, 624, <coughs> and then the frequency increases to 636, 648, 7 o'clock, and so on. Okay. Um, you, have, uh, you have that written down that Nicole will be able to get an accurate uh, reflection of that. That would be resolution 2018-203. Uh, you've made that motion. Ms. O'Keefe seconded. Any further discussion on uh, requesting NJ, uh, NJ Transit look at the bus scheduling up in, up in our parking ride? No discussion. Roll call, please. Council Members Bolton? Yes. Davison? Yes. Peretti? Yes. Deputy Mayor Martucci? Yes. Council Member Noonan? Yes. O'Keefe? Yes. Mayor Spear? Yes. Uh, Council Bolton will also have our police department uh, drive by the uh, Parking ride to ensure that everyone there that is catching that bus has got a parking sticker to make sure that West Milford's not filling up our parking lot without having permits, and that might free up some spaces for uh, for Ringwood residents. Appreciate that too. Um, by way of more commercials, um, the uh, the library is having a strategic planning session uh, this Friday. Uh, at the library at 6.30, so 6.30 to 8, uh, working towards the vision for the library as an important part of our community going forward. Um, and they wanted to invite the community to, to join that discussion. Uh, there's also going to be uh, Friday, November 16th, they're having a Autumn Leaves casually elegant evening at, at Berta Chateau, which is, is always a lovely time. Um, so be sure to, uh, to to check that out, um, and then two or three more commercials. Cupsaw Lake is having its haunted hilly uh, coming up on Sunday, the 28th. It's a lot of fun. People dress up in costumes and run around the lake. It's a it's a good time and a and a good fundraiser. And after you burn all those calories on Sunday morning, you can support the ambulance corps by going to their wine tasting event at tree tavern uh, so that's a, a lot of fun to to be had on the 28th uh, and then also the ambulance corps is having a dine to donate tomorrow at lakeside diner from four to nine o'clock so they also do take out and that, that's all the stuff i'm shelling <coughs> for tonight thank you mr bolton mr ferretti yes uh, I donated my time to Rye earlier. You knew and that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. These edu 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 education facilities for the for the for the for the community and prepares prepares them to university and college for bad education. Open space to start society and Passaic County also in the state of New Jersey needs all ages all agencies to get get the get the state's economy hundred everything in the state hundred percent. 100% better, 100% better. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Uh, I just want to say I've been hearing from many people that the roads are more slippery than ever. Uh, I don't know, I feel like uh, the north side of my house is greener than ever as well, and it's just like this lack of sun that we've been having. I think the roads probably are actually pretty slippery out there. Be careful, slow down. That's it. See it on Facebook, I hear it from neighbors, watch out, careful. That's all I have for tonight. <coughs> uh, Mr. Noonan? Uh, I want to thank Jason Oaken and his uh, team from the uh, Center for Food Action Ring and Walk. Excellent, uh, excellent uh, charity that they, uh, they uh, put untold number of hours in every single year to take care of a tremendous amount of families. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, also, I know uh, the town has the trunk or tree coming up. And yeah, Halloween's coming up, so be careful of the kids. The leaves will fall, and the roads are a little slippery, so be cautious out there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Davidson. Well, I've been out of state the last six days, so I really don't have anything to report. Uh, I wish I could give you some county information, but I haven't been down there either. So it's never good news there. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy uh, hearing what I heard tonight, though. I'll pass it on. Okay. Thank you, Councilman O'Keefe. Sure, I'd like to give everybody an update on what the green team has been up to. They're doing a green challenge. One of the things that they're asking the community to do is to skip the straw. Uh, we were at the farmer's market at Community Day. 
we got quite a few signatures from the people that attended those events. Um, I don't know if everyone knows, but it takes 200 years for a straw to decompose, and each year a million seabirds and marine animals die from ingesting plastic. So this is something we're asking people to do voluntarily. I passed around a um, pledge to all the council members. I think most of them took it to this evening. And if you haven't had an opportunity to take the pledge, feel free to go to Sustainable Ringwood, our Facebook page, where you can take the pledge. And once we achieve 10% of the community participating, the green team will have 10 additional points to go towards certification. We're also going to our local businesses to talk about alternatives to plastic straws, such as Aardmark, which is a great company that's been producing paper straws since 1888 in the United States. We also contacted the Ringwood schools, and we're happy to report that the Ringwood schools have already given up plastic straws and have gone to paper. And Michaela Schwab did a event on September 21st with the science teacher at Ryerson for all of our sixth graders to help them understand the need for conservation and the effect that plastic has on our environment. The other thing I'd like to talk about is I had Nicole make these great copies for each of you to see all the wonderful people who have volunteered to be part of the economic develop I mean the economic development commission which we hope to get revitalized if not at this meeting at the next meeting. We have Tom McGowan, Kristen Holton, who works down at the county with Deborah Hoffman, Robert Guzio, Orly Steinberg, who has been in business in our community for many years now, Tom Penorfi, um, Matt Van Allen from Maggie's, Ned Clausen, who many of you have heard of and just had a book published, and Mitch Kahn, who is somebody who has served and will previously on the EDC and will be a great person to help steer us as we get it up and running again. So I hope you all take a little time to review these. Thank you, Nicole, for getting everybody a copy. And I hope at our next meeting we can revitalize it and get it meeting on a monthly basis. So I think that's it. One, one other thing. I know that a few months back we got a grant from Passaic County about litter abatement. Uh, for about $27,000, was that correct? There was um, something came for litter abatement. Oh, from the, the, the tonnage grant. The tonnage grant, not the county. That's, that's oh, that's, state not, no, oh, that's yeah. from the state. So I'm wondering if any of that is being utilized for our county roads to pick up garbage because Ringwood Avenue, Slotesburg Road, a lot of these roads are starting to look a little shabby and with the beautiful fall season and lots of people coming up to visit our community it would be great if we could get something happening there to clean up the litter that's on the streets we use the we use that funding for many of the uh, recycling and, and litter programs that we currently have uh, we've asked the county to come up the sheriff's program came up for years and years cleaning right up in the, the past i've seen them um, often we have the dbw go out there and, and clean them up a couple times a year because but but the county roads we're trying to get the county to, to get up here and, and Throw this bad. We increased all of our uh, our fines for people who throw garbage out the window. Right. We put new signs up, and, and we've done a lot of that. Uh, but we already use a lot of the tonnage grant for for furthering our recycling program and our, and our cleanup programs now. Um, some of that money comes to help the people who go out there and clean up with bags and yeah. and, and whatnot, caring for Ringwood days. All those kind of things are used for those funds. Um, so we can see if there's anything left. To Maybe do a that. second Ringwood Caring Day all yeah, would the, be appropriate or, at or, this time. Or yeah, it would be really appropriate if the county came up and maybe yes, their DBW would come, agree. They would come up. I mean, our guys yeah. do it, and, and all of us pay for that. Uh, uh, but maybe the county DBW would come up. And, yeah, I recently and, ran into somebody that was picking up garbage. I stopped to thank him. He was actually from Allendale. He came up to clear um, Ringwood Avenue in front of the parks. Right. I spoke so. with the resident. Who wants to put a, a task force together? Uh, he actually lives in Wanakew. Uh, oh, really? Skyline Drive, part of Skyline Drive is in Wanakew. Yes. And so uh, he's, I, I told him that if in fact he was going to do some type of uh, cleanup day, I would make sure that we had vests and, 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 and bags and I'd have them escorted with a DPW or a police officer to make sure that they're safe. Because as you know, Skyline Drive and these Yeah, a lot are, of these roads we're talking are, about going out to do it yourself would be dangerous. That's and that's why, why it's really great if the sheriff's office come because they have the police car. And, 
and you know it's a county road and the, and the sheriffs could protect these individuals and that's why it would be so much better if they brought the prisoners back up and, and did that so have um, you reached out to them uh, recently is yes. there anything we can do as a council you cert to I, I would um, certainly reach out to them have all of you call down to the county and see what you can do uh, okay. i've reached out to them helen reaches out to them on a regular basis uh -huh. and uh, you know, one of the officers who was in charge of it uh, years ago lived in Ringwood uh, for years, and so he, he grew up here, and so he made sure that we, uh, we got done. But I think the problem is they don't have the staffing that they used to have, and they don't have, quite frankly, with, with bail reform, they tell us they don't have the prisoners that are eligible to go out and do that kind of stuff anymore. So. Right, there's been a lot of different changes down there that right. might have impacted it. But unfortunately, but this is a, you know, we're a green community. We do our part, and we're just asking everybody else to do their part. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we see somebody throw a bag out the window, I, I hear myself or the DPW go and look through that garbage to see if we can get a name on it to send them a, a fine to get them to stop doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, even up by um, Alpoa there, uh, clubhouse up on Hilltop, I walked up there the other day, I saw bags of garbage just dumped up there. I don't know who's doing it or why it's happening. I don't know if somebody, you know, goes up there periodically to check on it, but it seems where people can, they're just, the whole bag is dumped there. We unfortunately don't have the resources to do the county roads all the time. Right. Um, because we, we are, our st we've diminished our staff here and we don't we just don't have those kind of resources. Um, but we're going to get out there again. I talked to the guys where the road program is going to be wrapping up in the next week or so. Maybe we can get out there and do some. But it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of miles of road that uh, that has to be taken care of. Uh, no doubt about it. So. Yeah. Um, sorry, I've got like three competing ideas. <laughs> um, from the county perspective, are the prisoners the only option, or their DPW can come and do it just as well? Well, as they, their DPW can do it just like our DPW does it. Um, well, you know, maybe they can fund our DPW doing some of the work if they can't get anyone up here to do it. Well, they can do what? Make um, some monetary they, they, thing anything, towards our DPW. Anything that would help. I would suggest mm -hmm. that all of you get folks call down there because the people we call. Um, by the people who have run the program for many, many years. And um, but if, if you have some contacts in the county, by all means, uh, you know, give a call. We're going to continue to. But I was in my mind, and it's half. I don't mean it glib because I was I was thinking, you know, fall pickup, and I'm walking, and this season it's it's Halloween, Halloween parade. We could all wear costumes and clean up Ringwood Ave. Uh, we could combine it with the hunger walk. And actually, like, walk somewhere and close the road. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously not on this short notice, but yeah, I would, I would, make, make really. it a combined. I would encourage all of you if you're going to do that. We're going to wear safety vests, and we're going to oh, you yeah. know, uh, wear, yeah. costumes. Might not be the best, and when you're walking through the woods <laughs> and pulling break, things, break costumes. Just so not just to put the traffic <laughs> on. Yeah. Tripping in holes and, and branches and logs, and might not be the best thing for a costume, but certainly a, a safety vest. That's it. Thank you. Uh, um, Mr. Martucci? Yeah, I have two items. Uh, <clears throat> staying on topic, I'd li like to uh, give kudos to a woman, don't know her name, but every day when I go to work on Confitana Road, rain and shine, I see her picking up litter, and her bag is pretty full. So, uh, but every day around quarter to eight, she's on Conflict Town Road, coming up both sides and picking up litter. And I think that's fantastic. Uh, second thing, you know, I've talked about it before. It's involving cars, speeding, tailgating. Part of this is, um, you know, just people Give him common courtesy. You notice when you're trying to pull on this guy and drive, and you got to spot people speed up sometimes. It's um, everybody's in a mad rush. You're anonymous in the car, so it, it's that seems to be getting worse, where uh, people don't give you the common courtesy and going to work in the morning, coming home at night. Um, everybody's kind of cutting in all over the place and continue tailgating and uh, which I had again tonight coming up to the uh, council uh, meeting yeah it's something that um, 
people that are trying to look out for themselves. Because you could be there, the police could be there, and it keeps on going on. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Martucci. Okay. Uh, Can I add just one thing there, Mayor? Certainly. <laughs> I was, unless you are thinking of it, congratulations to the Lakeland Varsity Field Hockey Team prevailing this year as the Passaic County Champions. Right. In a hard-fought game on Saturday down in Wayne Hills, we uh, defeated West Milford after facing them last year in the finals also. Congratulations, girls. It was a wonderful game to watch. It was a one nothing contest, and it was just it was a great game to watch. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. And can I add just one thing? I just want to make one final plug for the Soberfest, which is coming up this October 20th. It's a great opportunity for everyone, not just those who are getting sober, but everyone to go out and have a natural high doing great things out in the community. Spring Lake is a great place to go zip lining and everything else. So I hope people come out and support the Soberfest. They do a lot of good in our community. Okay. And, and while we're doing interruptions. I think uh, that concludes our agenda. Uh, we will adjourn to executive session. Scott, what's the threshold for filing a litter complaint? Like if somebody sees, like what do you have to get? No, do you see anything? Get? Tell us. And license, license plate. plate. Okay.